Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric here today um, on a Sunday in birthday. There's a gentleman that called us with a power that burnt out on his home. Uh, the power provider was Excel and um, the electrical uh, permitting would be done through the state of Colorado with Dora. Um, what had happened was that it could have been just a weak panel, but I guess he's been welding for a little bit. But I think because of the age of the home, um, we don't normally see things like this go bad on a square D, but the age of the home, it looked like something went bad between where the, the uh, main disconnect breaker and the bus bar meets. And there's usually um, a stud there with a couple of nuts that are typically 7 16 and those, those tighten down, and that's what feeds the bus bar. Well, let me show you here kind of what happened. You can see the meltdown that happened. He actually heard the sizzling from inside and then the pop. And that melted between the 240 there. So this is a square D kilo panel, and they are one of the best. It's really hard for those to go bad. Um, but once that popped, you can see the black soot. It literally just about started a fire here. Um, again, I think it was to the age. Look at the cover right there. And then this came out here to the meter, and it's back to back. And it's 100 amps, and it goes with an overhead service mast with a 2-inch pole. But here's the issue. Once the power provider came here, you can see right here. Just come out here with the camera and look in. This was built as an addition, and this was not done with the permit, even to his knowledge, when he bought the place six months ago. Um, the problem is, is that the power company will not allow you to have a meter on the inside of an addition. So whether it's you know dried in or whether you have a sunroom that has glass or a prefab room panels, um, even decks and pergolos, uh, if that is not accessible with no door, they say either A, demo that out, whether permit or not, or B, move the service to the outside. The issue I'm having on the outside of this is there's a code article that's just changed. I think it's in, uh, my, my guess is 230 or 240 on services. Um, but it talks about not having any drip edges above the gutter or any gutters above the panel. And it could also be in, I think, around 110.26 talking about the um, um, your accessibility to a service. Well, with this as a meter outside, this gutter goes up only to about 8 foot, maybe 7 and a half. And then I've got to extend up. Well, the NEC code talks about 10 foot no less for any drip either the um the splice connectors to the drip loop which you can see it up there there's your splice connectors your drip loop and your service mask and your weather head well but the problem is is some power companies they request 12 foot so you have to adhere to the highest amount which would be 12 foot and uh, the bottom line is that once we go up 12 feet to 10 that's going to bend and now i got a gutter that has to be cut. So literally, the what one option is to run strut, which looks like this right here. I have to run strut up and create an H, cement it and drill it into the ground with some anchors on that cement and then run it up and create an H and basically mount your main meter right here and now most local authorities are wanting a disconnect here within sight outside so the fire department can hit boom one lever the 240.6 and 240 somewhere else talks about how you can have not more than six handles on a split bus bar system or on a multi-family dwelling to hit to kill the whole building well this would be one main the meter but the problem is is then we'd have to feed in a two inch conduit if we did a four aught or if we do 150 amp, we'd have to have at least an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half um, coming in here across this wall. And then we'd have to feed it to this new cabinet. Well, this cabinet can't really easily turn into a panel unless I find a way to do a cover. And then now that becomes a J box to go in. And then this stays here so I can use those as guy wires and anchor the next service as well. So this customer's in a bit of a dilemma because of the fact that we're trying to figure out how to get this repaired. Now that the, the Excel's pulled 
the power off of the house, he can't restore it until he has a permit. And on something like this, you, you need to get a permit. But the other question was, is could we take the panel out here, which is nippled back to back, and could we move the panel outside? But the problem is, is now you get an Article 210.12 under modifying branch circuits, and anything more than six foot, which they finally put a name on it, or number at six feet this year, at, on, on June of 2014, well then now we got to modify an arc fault, all of those branch circuits that are required in 210.12 as of now in 2015 of March, and that has to adhere because we've moved it. So we want to keep our panel here, which doesn't offend the code because we're not in the bathroom, we're not in a closet, and 110.26 says that we've got 30 inches at least from the edge to this side, so we're okay to leave that in the garage, and it's a NEMA 1 rated indoor. But we've got to put a cabinet here and run conduit, or he's got to cut this down. And now the service then can come overhead and go into this mast. Either we put in a new service, a new service mast with a threading here to go into a hub, or we find some kind of bushing here that's outdoor rated that would adapt without threads on a two inch GRC, because this has to be a two inch GRC. It's a rigid uh, conduit. And um, then at that point, if we could find a threadless bushing with a Myers hub into a hub of a meter hub with a new bypass lever, then that'll literally reduce the price, if not close to two grand, because we're not trying to re-feed a panel, a subfeed, and then to here. Plus the fact that we also have to drive our two ground rods, whether he removes this area and we drive it, or we put it outside and drive it with two ground foot or two ground rods that are six foot apart at eight foot deep. Um, then he has, we have to find a way to get in another water line, excuse me, a grounding electrode for our water line. We drill it through and go into the, 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 the little joist right here underneath the panel into the crawl space and then we run it to the caddy corner to the opposite side of the house. So as you can see in this situation, I try to explain this to people on the phone and it's the hardest thing to explain because there's so many codes involved. But whether your Excel pulls your power or you're getting an update on a service, I've had so many people have a sunroom with glass and professionally done. I mean, they spent 30, 40 grand to get this beautiful um, sunroom done. And then the sunroom guys never said that you can't have a meter inside. And they claim, oh, well, we didn't know. But they put sunrooms on every day for decades on the back of a house. You can never put Excel's power of a meter inside a home. It's never been allowed and it never will. And if your power's coming in underground, you should never pour cement over those feeders for any length. Put pavers, you know, just like this flagstone or brick, it's removable. And then you can retrench. Um, but again, so this gentleman just moved here. We're trying to figure out how to make this work for him. It's an unfortunate thing, um, but somehow we'll try to find a solution for him. Um, anyways, thanks for joining us guys.